Hello. All uh, right. So, I finished my speech yesterday morning. Haven't learned it. I'm really sorry. Someone who likes to maybe get on stage and kind of try and entertain people should have really learned this. Seven pages of speech. So I hope you've uh, you've had a, a toilet break. If you haven't, please. I'm sorry. You, well, you can't go. I'm sorry. You're, you're kind of stuck here now. So sorry. There I'll are some stop. gifts though. Oh, there are gifts, gifts, yeah, not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, just for those that are special. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I just like I haven't written on here, but I would like to kind of um, mention it. But like when we when we originally we we didn't have a date in mind when we booked the wedding, and we was gonna have it ne- last September. And one of the one of the dates we were throwing around was like Friday the 13th. We thought, oh, that's kind of cool because it's quite unlucky, and we thought it'd be kind of funny to have a wedding on Friday the 13th. And and I, I do like my horror films, so that's that. You you may have seen a little kind of connection to the the horror franchise Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> but that's that's fine. I um, lost my train of thought. Was it going? Oh yes, Friday the 13th. Um, so that was kind of cool. But then we had to push it back uh, because financially we couldn't do it in September. So we pushed it back to today. Um, which is lovely because it, it turns out like my grandparents and my, my dad's side actually also got married on Friday the 13th. Um, was it 1937? It was sort of, yeah, the same day essentially. So we, we're going to share this kind of date and anniversary with, with theirs as well, which is really nice. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. So it means a lot. Um, so, okay, I'll start with this. Uh, hello, everyone. Kind of done that already, but that's fine. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for coming. We really appreciate the effort that you made to be here. You've all been invited because we're either family or we're friends. And over the last 36, 37, 38, is it? Yeah. 38 years, <laughs> we've yeah. each shared moments with you that have meant enough to us all to be here today. And we love you all. Uh, and thank you for being here with us on this great day. I will just say, I was a bit worried about having a wedding in Norfolk um, that it might put people off, because of, not because of the distance that you've had to travel, but because um, <laughs> Norfolk has a bit of a reputation for inner family relations. Um, and I guess, I guess the thought of showing up and potentially seeing me marry one of my cousins was too much for some people, but not for you, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> So this is my first wedding, um, there, there were, <laughs> my only wedding, it's, it's my first draft, uh, I, I would have gone back and changed that. Um, there, there, there are a few things that I learned, a few things I didn't know coming into this. The first thing I've learned is that getting married is a great excuse for not going out to things. Before the wedding, it was really hard to make up an excuse to not go to stuff, but for the last two years we've been able to bail on work leaving dues people's birthday parties, <laughs> christenings, witness duty, just by simply saying, I'm sorry, we're saving up for a wedding, we'd love to come, but we really can't. Oh. It's been amazing. Um, obviously now, we're married, um, so we'll have to think of a new excuse, and I'm thinking, like, I'll probably say something like, I'm sorry, we're saving up for a child, and, which is, in a way, suggests that we're never, ever, ever coming out to anything ever again. So that, that, that would be, that's a good idea. Um, I don't want to give you the wrong idea, Mum, we're not pregnant. Not yet, but there is a work barbecue coming up later in the year, so... <laughs> we, we, who knows, it could be a thing. Another thing I learned is that Lucy is always right about everything. Ever. <laughs> and thirdly, something I didn't know until this week, oh no, until a week ago when I read it, I, I, Recently, something I learned is that the um, best man speech has to be the funniest speech of all the speeches. Oh. Wish I had known that before I picked John to do my speech. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably not got much room for humour. Um, I mean, I'm not, not, I'm not being called John, but I am the funny one in the family. <laughs> and, and I'm, um... <laughs> Mum? I'm the, I'm the funny one. Thank you. Dad? Dad? I'm the funny one. Dad, we practice this? Yeah. yeah, thank you. I am I'm the funny one. <laughs> um, but, you know, everyone thinks it. it's fine, maybe. But today, John, for one night only, you get to be the joker. 
I'm going to take a back seat. I'm not going to make any jokes in my speech. In fact, I'm going in the opposite direction. I want to make you cry. <laughs> I'm going to speak from the heart. Play cold, play music. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear that? Probably not. But anyway, bef before I start embarrassing everyone up here, I'd like to propose a toast to all the family and friends that can't be here today. I'd like to raise a glass for those who have left us, but who will always have a place in our hearts and at our tables. Those who made us laugh, made us love, and made us live. Please raise a glass for our lost loved ones. To our loved ones. This is my mum. This is my dad. They are, my they are the original Mr. and Mrs. Butler, and I have spent all of my life watching them. So a great example of how marriage is done. Through thick and thin, they have stuck together and provided me and my brothers with not only a great childhood, but a secure family unit, which when I grew up, I learned was a rare thing. So my parents are a team. They are best friends. They are my role models. And when I look at me and Lucy, I can't help but feel like we have the same connection as my parents do. Thank you, Mum, and thank you, Dad, for everything you've taught me so I can have a long, loving relationship like you do. Words can't describe how much you mean to me, but maybe this engraved whiskey glass can. <laughs> Thank you. Now I move on to my brothers. I'm really grateful that you're both here. You both mean the world to me. Joseph, you've always been my favourite younger brother. <laughs> if it wasn't for you making us watch Cartoon Network every hour of every day as kids, I might never have discovered my passion for animation, and I'd never have gone to uni to study it, and I'd never have met Lucy. So thank you for passionately hogging the TV remote through the 90s. <laughs> Got something for you. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Thank you, mate. John, you're my favourite older brother. For many years of my life, you were my partner in crime. From the early days when mum and dad dressed us up the same and convinced everyone that we were twins. <laughs> Through to secondary school when you stormed out of your maths class to come and fight off the kids I was play fighting with because you saw us in the playground and thought I was getting beat up. <laughs> I want to thank you for every time you've stuck up for me and fought for me. You've got a big heart and you'll always go out of your way to help and protect the people that you love and I'm blessed to have been adopted with you and allowed to live out the brotherhood that we were born to have. I love you guys. Uh, the wedding Obviously, it won't, won't be the same if I didn't have you both here as my best man. Uh, <laughs> Anyone crying apart from me? <laughs> yeah, this will get them. They'll be in tears. Get the tissues out. The music, man. It's the music. It's a, I can hear the music. That's what it is. You can't, you can't hear the cold play playing. It's just like that itself. Okay. Next, I'd like to thank Lucy's mum. Sorry if I shouted too loud there, mum. <laughs> Sorry if I. Um, so, I'd like to thank Lucy's mum, Sue, and my new mother in law. Firstly, thank you for bringing Lucy into this world. Thanks to you, I'm now able to spend the rest of my life with my soulmate. As a single parent raising four kids, there must have been times when it was hard for you. But regardless to your own personal situation, you pushed through and you worked as many jobs as you could to provide for your family. You set a great example for your kids and your grandkids and great grandkids. <laughs> you've shown unconditional love and loyalty to your family. And by doing this, you've installed these lovely qualities into Lucy. Lucy would do anything for her family and we can't wait to have some baby butlers. Not in an illegal child labour way. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. Sorry, John. I'm sorry. 
You're a great role model for the whole family and I'm honoured to call you my mother-in-law. I'm also honoured to spend the rest of my life with your beautiful brown-eyed girl. <laughs> Thanks also for all you've done to get us here. Let's go get you some. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, can you play that again? Because I was really getting the yeah, vibe. Yeah, from that. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Malcolm. <laughs> Both Lucy and I wanted you to sit at our top table because even though you're not family by blood or name to us, you are family. You're the closest thing Lucy has to a father and the closest thing I'll ever have to a father-in-law. <laughs> we love you and we love how loyal you are to family. Not a birthday goes past without you there, giving out scratch cards or beer. <laughs> and I don't think you've ever missed one, you're always there. And I also love it when you hop by our workplace and say hello, it's great to see you when I'm having a bad day, that, that makes me happy. And then there's Christmases, you're always there wearing your funny mince pie hat, cutting the turkey and handing out more scratch cards. <laughs> always trying to make our lives richer, when really it's you that enriches our lives. So thank you Malcolm for everything you are to us, um, and here's a small token of our love for you. There you go. <laughs> Now we move on to Paige, our beautiful bridesmaid. Firstly, thank you for being Lucy's bridesmaid. I know there was probably never any hesitance when agreeing, but it means a lot to us both that you did this. I just hope you return the favor when you get married and let me be your bridesmaid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. Seriously though, you've been great and you did a great job today and, and thank you, we both love you loads. So. I'd like to make a toast to Paige, the bridesmaid. So to Paige. Hey, hey. Can I toast myself? Yeah. Of course you can. Drink up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have to kiss you. Here you go. Next up. Oh, okay. This is cool. Next up, I want to thank Mini Me. I'm also known as Caden. He's our page boy and also Paige's boy. If anyone was born to be our page boy, it's Caden. Thank you, Caden. There you go, my friend. You did awesome. I'm so glad that didn't hit on the head. That would have been like a blooper. Um, I think this is the part where I should tell Lucy how much I love her, but I'm going to pop that on the shelf for a couple of minutes <laughs> so I can thank our readers. So, Pete, yes, hello. <laughs> It's like an evening with Pete Butler. It's nice. I kind of pop around, meet all of the audience. Hi, Pete. Hello. No pressure. I'm just hand over you as I read this to you. I can hear that from over here. Um, so, firstly, I'd like to thank my friend Pete for his reading. When they told me I needed some readers for the ceremony, it didn't take me long to pick you. I remember that time back at uni when we were hanging out and you was reading a book, and that's when I knew that you could read. <laughs> so, thank you so much. I'd like, to find, I'd like to thank our other reader, uh, Jennifer. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> A little bit of connection. Um, Jennifer. Um, not many of you will know this, but Jennifer is actually my sister. Um, well, mine and John's sister from our biological father's family, and, and it means so much that you're here with us today. I've been blessed and I've have been adopted by, by great parents and become part of an amazing family. But getting the chance to meet you and have a sister, you and the family, <laughs> and have a sister means so much to me. You, you've changed my life and I love you and your family and thank you so much for accepting me into your lives. 
I'd also like to say that you're as much my family as anyone in this room, and I really hope you feel the love from everyone here today as well. So thank you. Anyway, last but not least, I should probably head up to the front. <laughs> Ending again. Do you want me to start over? Just once more. <laughs> <laughs> no one can hear. Is everyone okay? Let you go. Okay, Lucy, this is the big finale. All right, hang on. Let me just get this started again. Hang on, wait one minute. You got a clap. Okay, yeah, good. Go. Anyway, last but not least, I'd like to thank my rock, my better half, Erring Doors, my wife, Lucy Butler. But before I thank you, I just like to tell you everyone, I'd like to tell everyone about how we met. So it was 2005, we just started uni in Farnham. I think I was about two weeks in, um, it was about two weeks in when our, our paths crossed. Um, I went out to, um, I went out one night to a house party in like the student village and that's eventually where we found each other. One minute I'm cracking open a Budweiser and then suddenly this beautiful girl with beautiful brown eyes, long brown hair, and an amazing smile is standing in front of me, talking to me, smoking a roll up and holding a large glass of wine. <laughs> so we, we got chatting and I realized that we were actually doing the same. That, so we got chatting and we realized that we were actually doing the same animation course. And in fact, we'd have been in the same classes for the past week. <laughs> so we just hadn't noticed each other until now. So after that night, we became friends and spent a lot of time together watching Blackadder, drinking wine and eating cheese toasties, which soon became our daily routine. I think the moment I knew I loved you was on that night, a group of us went to have a drink at the student union and you got upset and walked off. I came after you to see if you was okay and found you sat on a garden sculpture, crying. I took you back to your room and you told me how much you missed your family and your friends and you were clearly someone with a big heart who cared about others, and it hurt me to see you upset. It was at that moment when I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. So fast forward our story by 15 years, and here we are, still best friends, and now also husband and wife. So I've got a few things to thank you for. Thank you for being my friend when I was a lot younger, a lot smellier, and a lot more irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for introducing me to Tresemme shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> that was a game changer. Thank you for making me laugh with something as unintentional as a dorky glance or a cheeky quip made at my expense. You've got to have a sense of humor to be with me. Not because I'm a joke, but because laugh is the best medicine and it will help you get through anything. Except coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing won't help. <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm not a qualified doctor. Don't take my advice. Stay away from comedy nights. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at me. Not for when I'm trying to be funny, but for real stuff. Like that time I woke up and you pulled a piece of blue tack off my bum cheek. <laughs> I have no idea how it got there. But to this day, you still find it funny and I'm sure our grandkids will love hearing that story every time they come round. Thank you for telling me when I'm wrong. Thank you for not getting mad when I tell you to shut up. Thank you for accepting my apologies. <laughs> Thank you for removing spiders from our house. <laughs> Thank you for not killing them. Thank you for being the most caring person I know to not only spiders, but people as well. Thank you for introducing me to my mother-in-law. <laughs> Thank you for India. Thank you, terror. Thank you, disillusionment. Thank you, frailty. Thank you, consequence. Thank you. Thank you, silence. Thank you, Alanis Morissette. Thank you for making the cake topper. Thank you for making that beautiful post box. Have you seen that yet? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for showing up today. <laughs> and thank you for being my wife and making me the happiest man in this room. And before we raise our glasses and toast love and marriage, I'd love to read a line from one of our favorite comedies, which I feel represents perfectly how I feel about Lucy. It's taken from Blackadder series four, episode three. <laughs> 
I'm gonna, I, I, I have a moustache, but let's pretend this is a bushier moustache. <laughs> I want to make you happy, darling. I want to build a nest for your ten tiny toes. I want to cover every inch of your gorgeous body in pepper and sneeze all over you. <laughs> With that being said, I'd now like to make a taste to love and marriage. To love and marriage. To love and marriage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.